All right, so welcome back. Uh, today's an unplanned maintenance episode. I saw what I did last time. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I did some stuff kind of not the best way. So we're going to make our magic system a little bit better and a little more flexible so that we can have different size magic power-ups. And we're also going to make it so that we can use different projectiles that have different magic costs. Um, clean that up a little bit. And we're also going to make our um, arrow no longer have a memory leak. So let's uh, let's get right in. This is actually the third time I've recorded this video, so hopefully this time it sticks. But uh, let's jump right in here. Uh, all right, cool. So last time I made the magic meter and the magic bottle power up to allow you to increase that magic meter. Now, some people in the Discord had mentioned that they would like to have something that looks like the Diablo health bar that's kind of filling up vertically. And you can do that a couple of different ways. Uh, number one, let me actually, I'm just gonna make like a regular circle. Uh, you can make those in Unity just by right clicking in your project window, going to create, and then I'm gonna create a sprite and I'll create, nope, go back. I'll create a circle. And this is just gonna be circle. Um, if I were to go to my canvas and under my, uh, where did I put it? This thing. Okay, so under my health holder, I got my slider. Um, I'm gonna actually turn this off for the moment. And under my health holder, I'm instead going to add a UI image and there are other ways that you can do this too somebody had mentioned that you could have I could have put the magic bar up here I was meaning that to be like an alternate weapon selected but if you wanted this to be a health bar you could totally do that so this image I'm gonna set to be the circle um, hmm. it should just turn into a circle um, Anyway, if you change it from simple to filled, you can choose the fill method. And so in this case, the fill method would be uh, vertical. And you can make it so that this little health bar go up and down. Now you can make this more interesting by adding an animation to it, maybe making it look like boiling water or something, or I don't know, boiling red juice, whatever that health is supposed to be in Diablo. And I mean, you could even add like a little uh, animated object at the top here. Essentially it's the same thing I was doing with the slider except instead of setting a max value the fill amount is always going to be between 0 and 1. So you would need to encode figure out what percentage of your magic is left and then set your fill amount to be that percentage as a decimal. So say for example you have 8 out of 10 left that would be 80 percent and you would set the fill amount to be 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.5, stuff like that. So this is another way that you can do it. Actually, let me even just make this the magic bar sprite that I have so that maybe you can get a better idea of what it would look like. Um, one of the things I like about the way Unity does filled sprites is it, it doesn't shrink it like the slider does. You can make the slider not do that by using a, what's called a sprite mask. Um, but let's change this to filled and it's gonna kind of distort it like that. And so it looks like it's actually filling up all the way up to what you want it to be. So yeah, it's kind of neat. It's something that you could do if you wanted to, uh, other than using the slider. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to turn my uh, slider back on. All right, cool. So that's left over from last time. There's something else that's left over from last time that we need to deal with here, and that's the arrow, well not last time, time before I guess. The arrows will just keep going forever until they hit an enemy, which creates a, what's called a memory leak. Um, even though they're not being used in the scene, Unity is constantly keeping track of where those objects are in space, even if they're, you know, a thousand units away from where they started, Unity is still keeping track of it. So there's a few things that we can do for that. I'm going to go about the simplest one. Um, what you could do is you can make a range for your arrows, and when they originate, you'd keep track of their transform position. And then when they go to a new, like as they're going, you could check to see how far they are from their origin, 
and if they're more than their range, then you can destroy them. I'm going to do something a little bit simpler than that. Um, I'm instead going to um, give them a timer that they're going to last. So I'm going to go to my scripts here and my objects, and I'm going to open up my arrow script. So I don't have Visual Studio open, so this will take a minute. I'll meet you guys back here in just a moment. All right, so I'm going to give the arrows an amount of time I want them to exist. And I'm going to do this using a counter. Uh, Unity doesn't have a built-in timer component, um, so you kind of have to fiddle your way around it. And you could make a static timer script that you can reference from anything, but I think it's easier just to put the timer on the object itself. And I'm going to do this by making two different floats, one public and one private. So I'm going to make a public float, which I'm going to call... I don't know, lifetime. And I'm going to make a private float, which I'm going to call lifetime counter. And in my start method, I'm going to set my private one, the lifetime counter, equal to the lifetime. And the reason I'm doing this is I want one number for how long the arrow should survive that is never being manipulated in code, that's instead just being used as a reference. Now, in this case, I'm going to need to add an update method. So I'll do that here, void update. And in my update method, I'm going to decrease my lifetime counter. So lifetime counter minus equals, and I'm going to decrease it by the amount of time that happened since the last frame. So time dot delta time. Time dot delta time is frame rate independent. Um, I could have it just, you know, decrease like one and expect it to be 30 frames, but uh, your game will run at different speeds on different systems. And if you're doing it that way, you can cause it to have uh, a different lifetime. But we want it to have the same amount of time it survives on every system, no matter the frame rate. So to do that, we're going to decrease it by however much time passed since the last frame. Then we're going to check to see if lifetime counter, and we don't want it to be equal to zero because it's very unlikely that, it'll ever, that it will ever be exactly equal to zero. Instead, it'll probably, you know, go from like 0.001 to negative 0.02 or something like that. So I want to check to see if my lifetime counter is less than or equal to zero. Uh, you also, if you're using a float, you don't want to use double equals because the way that Unity does floating point uh, calculations, it's very unlikely that a float will ever be exactly equal to another number. Um, anyways, so uh, if the lifetime counter is less than or equal to zero, I'm going to destroy this dot game object. So I'm just going to destroy it if my timer's done. Now, if this were something that you wanted to use for, say, like a rapid fire weapon, and you wanted to use a timer, instead of destroying it, you would just set the lifetime counter back to um, the lifetime, the public version. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. I'm going to go to my uh, prefabs. I'm going to find my objects and my arrow. And I'm going to open that prefab in another window as soon as Unity is done compiling. All right, cool. So in here, I'm going to find my arrow script. I'm going to set my lifetime to 1 which sounds pretty short, but I think it's okay. And some people on the Discord actually, they made a fireball for this and they animated it. There's all kinds of stuff you can do to juice this up. Um, if I were to go over everything that you could do to juice it up, the, like this would be like a million part video series, which I know some people would be okay with, but other people would not. <laughs> so anyway, um, it's auto saves um, right here. If this is ticked, you don't have to save or anything. You can just hit that back arrow and go back to your sample scene. Now, when I hit play, I should see my magic meter fill, and then I'll start firing my arrows kind of off to the side here. So magic meter, and you can see off the side in the hierarchy that those arrows were being destroyed. All right, cool. Now, uh, let's talk about the way that I set up the magic system. And the other day, I thought about a way that I could do it even easier. So my arrow here, uh, if I go into its script, I can assign an amount of magic I want this to use. So this is going to be a public float, and I'm going to call it 
um, magic cost. I'm going to save that and then back in my player movement script instead of reducing my magic arbitrarily by one which is what I was doing here um, do, 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 do. where was I changing it? It was in here somewhere. So start with coroutine, second attack, second attack uh, player inventory dot current magic. Oh, I was setting it in. That's really dumb of me. I was setting it in the magic manager. That's crazy. All right. So my decrease. All right. So let's let's do a couple things here. So reduce magic dot raise. So this is going to raise the signal to reduce the magic, and then that's what the magic manager is looking for. Um, I am in instead going to do this slightly differently. So hold on a second. Okay, so here's what I was planning on doing. So right now I have my magic manager um, setting its, its value and everything. And in my inventory, I set a current magic and I'm not sure why I set this. And then I never, never really did anything with it, um, which is, is weird. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a little method uh, that's going to be created on enable. So public, that's not how you spell that. Uh, public void on enable, and this will be ha this will happen whenever the uh, player inventory object is enabled. And what this will do is set the current magic equal to the max magic. Then I'm going to make another little method here that's going to reduce the magic. So I'm going to do public void reduce magic. And then this is going to take my current magic minus equals. And I'm going to pass in a value here. I'm going to call this an, it's, yeah, it's a float. So let's do float magic cost, even though I'm going to be using it as an integer, might as well make it a float in case you want a spell that costs like 0 0.5 or 1.5 or something. Uh, or if you want like a power up that reduces your cost by 10%, it's hard to do if you're keeping everything integers. So current magic minus equals magic cost. All right. So the reason I'm doing that is I've got my reduced magic flag. I'm going to leave that, but I'm also going to access my player inventory dot reduce magic and I'm going to reduce it by the arrows dot magic cost and let's make sure the arrows magic cost is a float as well it is all right cool so I'm going to save that and I'll save this as well and now in my magic manager when I am decreasing the magic I'm not going to arbitrarily decrease the slider and I'm not going to change the current magic. I'm instead going to check to see what the current magic value is in the in the player inventory. So magic slider dot value is equal to player inventory dot current magic. Um, and then if it's less than zero and I don't need to, s yeah, I might as well change the current magic to zero. Um, all right, cool. And then when we mad add magic, I'm not going to do the uh, current slider value like that. Instead, our magic slider value like that, and then change the player inventory. I'm instead going to just make the value equal to whatever the current magic is in the player inventory. So magic slider dot value is equal to player inventory dot current magic. Some of you are probably wondering what I was doing last time. I don't know what I was doing. I was being dumb. And now the magic power up. So this has a signal that it's raising. And the signal it was raising was on the magic manager. And I'm instead going to have it be on the... Um, I'm instead going to have it be on the inventory. So just to take a look here, I want to look at the way that I'm doing it with the coins. So... I go to my coin object here. Let me go to my coin script. Yeah, and the power up signal gets raised, and that power up signal 
Joker. I want to go back here. There we go. That power up signal, I think, is on the. I think it's on the canvas on the coin box, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, it is. And then it's calling coin info, coin text manager, update coin count, and the coin text manager. Yeah, and so that just refers. So what it does is it, um, the coin itself here, it increases the coins in the player inventory on its own, and then it uh, raises the signal. So I'm going to have the magic power up do the same thing. So this is going to need to have a reference to the player inventory. Um, and we'll call this player inventory. And then on trigger enter 2D, we will do player inventory dot uh, current magic plus equals. And then we have to give it a value. And I'll give this a public float magic value and then we'll do current magic plus equals magic value and then we'll raise the signal and then the signal will just make the magic manager check to see what it is all right cool this is better i don't know why i did it the way i did it last time so bear with me here all right so now i have to mess around with my prefabs a little bit and my objects i'm going to grab my arrow open that prefab as soon as unity is done compiling mm -hmm. I'm going to open that prefab, and then in my arrow, I'm going to give it a magic cost of 1, just to keep my life easy. I'm going to go to my magic bottle. I'm going to give it a magic value of, say, 2. So that should give back 2. And then, yeah, I think everything else should be fine. Uh, I'm going to I'll leave that magic bottle that's in the scene. Let's take a look and see if this breaks anything. Um, <laughs> all right, so there we go. We're reducing. So the reducing of it works just fine. And now I'm almost done, so... Oh, okay, cool. Oh, it's because I didn't, I didn't set in the magic bottle. I didn't tell it what the player inventory was. So in the magic bottle, I'm going to find my scriptable objects right here, and my player objects, and my player inventory. There we go. So let's try that now. Um, so we'll hit play. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Cool. And now if we go over, here. This also makes it way more customizable because instead of just increasing by one, we can have smaller and larger magic bottles that increase by different amounts. And we can also have um, different projectiles that take a different amount of magic. So, oh, and on top of that, instead of using a slider, um, if you wanted to, you could now use a Diablo thing. Some people wanted that to be up here. Um, like I said, instead of here in the code, instead of setting the value, you would do something like, um, so say it's an image instead of a slider, you do magic image dot fill. I think it's called fill. If you're using a filled image, let me double check here. Um, so I'm gonna grab my health holder, make an image. And if I make it a, yeah, give it an actual image before it will work the way it's supposed to. Give it an image. Uh, if I make it filled, okay, so it's fill amount, um, right, and then you'd set the fill origin to be bottom, and the fill type would be vertical, and then you can choose to preserve ac aspect or whatever, but it would be your fill amount, and that calculation would be dot fill amount would be equal to your um, player inventory dot current magic divided by player inventory dot max magic. And that's how you would do that. Um, and then you check to see if it's greater than one. If it's greater than one, you'd set it equal to one. Um, so yeah, if anybody wanted to use 
that kind of object instead. And that makes it kind of fun too, because like I said, you can animate it. So it looks like it's boiling with magic, I guess, whatever the Diablo ones are boiling with. And you could even put an object at the top that makes it look like a little fill line. But yeah, okay. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave a comment down below. You can follow me on uh, Twitter, find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. I meant for this to be a video where we actually talk about making that bow item, but that's going to have to be next time since this video is already pretty long. Um, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, like I said, feel free. Discord is a great place to go, if you, especially if you want, you're looking for how to expand this project. There's a ton of people in the Discord who are way smarter than I am and have done really cool things. Um, uh, there's a, a guy in there called Power who's made like a dash system, a hook shot, and like a net is the last thing I saw him make. So there's all kinds of cool things you can check out in there if you want to. Um, yeah, otherwise have yourselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.